What is up guys and welcome back to part two of the series. Tonight we are back at the shop and we are about to drop the short block and the trans of the car. David's gonna be opening up the transmission and inspecting it to make sure that everything is good because we're installing a full Liberty Gears faceplate kit. So it's pretty much a dog engagement on stock gears. It's gonna give us that ability to shift like a dog box but on OEM gears. So the whole point of doing the faceplates is so that you don't miss a gear every time. A new twin disc clutch is going to be provided by our clutch sponsor, Action Clutch. And as soon as the clutch comes in, David is going to be installing it along with the Liberty faceplate kit and the trans will be ready to go in. All right guys, so Luis just got done pulling out the motor. Next up is gonna be David taking the trans off and inspecting everything, making sure that all the gears are good and getting it ready for the full Liberty faceplate gears. So guys, this is the twin disc from Action Clutch. I've had this for like 6,000 6, miles. And we will see right now how it has held up from all the beating that I gave it. Well, you can tell you've been launching the shit out of it. <laughs> wow. Uh, starting to show cracks. Normal, usually some of the twins. They also pre grab it pretty good, huh, with the cracks? Yeah. So that's this number one. The floater, pretty beat. And disc number two is okay. Not bad. Not bad. Still has a lot of meat. And still performing pretty good. Action clutch, guys. The only way to go. So the motor in trans is out and we're going to continue this tomorrow so I'm going to fast forward you guys to the next day. Yeah, I saw it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Damn. So just like that. Oh, it's a little bit like that. Nice and clean. Okay, looking good.
I'm gonna bring you guys to the trans room. Show you guys my transmission. This is David. It's a, it's a Charles transmission. We're upgrading the third and fourth to a faceplate. Uh, so we basically eliminate the synchros and they weld on a dog plate to it uh, to prevent any mist shifting. And uh, we also upgraded the final drive. We went from a stock uh, 452 to uh, M Factory 431. So you so won't have any issues with that um, hitting the rev limiter fourth gear at the end of the quarter. And right now we're just moving up the bearings so they don't get dry on the initial startup. So we can throw it back in the case. Just like that guys, the trans is all sealed up. So we're back here with Luis. We are doing the balancing shaft. Lining everything up. So I guess he just... This one's hooked up to the, to the oil pump. This one's the other one, tensioner. And crank pulley. Let's see what it looks like with this. This goes in. This goes in. It's just dirty right now. Here she is. I know, baby. We're gonna make some good power together. Tito Armin's gonna take care of you. So the engine just got timed. And what's next? The clutch. Oh yeah, the clutch. That's pretty much it, huh? Water pump and oil pump's done. Just the clutch. After you time an engine, you rotate the crank six times. And this pin right here that goes here has to be able to go in freely and spin. Or rotate the nose. Yeah, you don't you don't need to like look for the hole, huh? Nope, it goes straight in. So that means that you have a perfectly timed engine after six turns, and that pin goes straight in. Yep. I hope this inspires people that have a stock block uh, Evo, Evo Eight or Evo Nine or Evo Seven, you know, in Asia or in other countries. It also comes with the risk of you know breaking and I think it depends on how you treat it how often you race it so if any of you guys have any questions uh, feel free to message me on Instagram or just leave a comment below I'd be happy to reply to every question you have and I'll try to answer it as much as uh, I can I'll go over some parts that are laying around here um, this is the apex powered GTR race kit uh, 
These are my FIC 2150 injectors. These you can get uh, from stmtune.com. I think they were like 700 or 800, something like that. Somewhere around there. And then this is my Precision Turbo 6466. It just got powder coated by Velocity Powder Coating. They did a really good job on that. And they ceramic coated my hot side and all my hot parts. So that's the hot side right there. It's ceramic coated black. My exhaust, uh, exhaust manifold is made by Gonzivo Motorsports. I'll put some links in the description below. So if you want to check out their websites or you can also check them out on Instagram. So one more thing that we also did was we deleted the oil cooler. So this is a $20, um, 20 or $25 oil cooler delete plug kit that you can buy from STM. So we got that on so that I'm going to be running the uh, Angry Aero bumper shutters. I might install a oil temp gauge also. Here she is guys. I just gave her a wash. So yeah, she's on the stock wheels right now, but I got the slicks at home. So we're just getting her ready for a dyno day on Thursday. Armin's gonna be tuning it at D Sport. They have a dyno jet over there. I'll bring you guys with me. I'll give you guys a little tour of the uh, outside and then the interior just to show you guys you know where it's at right now. First of all, you can see here is my the Alcantara steering wheel wrap. This was like $40 on eBay. I stitched it myself. Uh, it comes with instructions. It's kind of confusing at first, but you can get the hang of it once you, you know, like watch. I, I, I saw a video on YouTube and just followed that. Uh, Moving on, I have some AEM gauges. Uh, I have the boost gauge, air fuel, and oil pressure. I do have my AC climate control uh, unit. It's just at home. And my AC does work. I do have AC. Um, I'm missing the center console right now, but it's, at, it's just at home. I need to get that as well over here to the shop. And I have a Pioneer uh, head unit and a complete infinity speaker system uh, front and back I mean I can't drive without a radio like I bought this car in January I believe um, and this this being an RS a 2004 RS it was all original and it just had a boost gauge and that's it it didn't even it didn't even have this uh, what is this called the group S what is this freaking thing called the Group S uh, gauge thingy, whatever it's called. <laughs> the gauge holder. <laughs> I picked it up from the maker himself. This this was a conversion also. You have to buy the relocator kit. Uh, STM Tune has that also. My seats are original Evo 8 seats. Uh, nothing special about them. And one more thing that I wanted to show you guys is my staging brake. So how the way this works is it's like a poor man's staging brake i want to say because i just took out the spring and look what it does like say you're in first gear right well there's no transmission right now but <laughs> say you're in first gear and then you want to you want to launch the car um as if you're racing and slowly let go of the clutch and when you whenever you want to take off you just drop this see if you want to park your car or leave your handbrake on next time you gotta pull this out and then pull up See? And leave it like that. It's kind of hard to push the car in because of the freaking uh, welded diff. Uh, I got that welded diff. Oh yeah, that's one thing also that I have a welded diff. I got that from my friend Rob. I'll see you guys in part three. This is the end and I'm out.